Okay, yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuan Fang Su, and uh, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Cambridge. So uh, I'm pretty happy to share my previous work at Purdue, work with my uh, colleague, uh, Chi Han Huang and uh, Professor Luna Lu. So uh, in the title of Colloidal Nano Silica for Low Carbon Self-Killing Cementitious Material, Okay, so uh, as we all know that concrete is uh, intrinsic brittle material under the tensile loading. So uh, the conditions such as shrinkage, temperature fluctuation, overloading will all lead to the cracking occur in the concrete structure and the further affect the durability and the serviceability of the concrete structure. So uh, many people uh, try their best to uh, develop different approach to address this problem. And uh, uh, one of the uh, approach or characteristic that attract much attention is the self-healing uh, performance of the concrete. So it's basically mimic the uh, our wound healing process of the skin, which is uh, when we have the wound for our skin and uh, our cell will try, our be try their best to uh, to seal the uh, wound to prevent us from the infection. So that uh, the, this uh, similar concept can be applied to the uh, concrete and uh, it will extend uh, the surface life of, uh, of our civil infrastructure and potentially reduce the carbon emission caused by uh, re reconstruct or repairing the uh, current uh, structure. So in general, the healing of the concrete can be classified into the three different categories of the physical cause, chemical cause, and the mechanical cause. And today we're gonna to talk about the chemical cause. And so there are three mechanisms for the chemical cause, including the further hydration of unhydrated tissues material, polylenic reaction. So the thing is we have some leftover of the unhydrated tissues material and react with water that uh, uh, it produces CSH and uh, seal the crack. And uh, the second one is formation of a calcite, uh, which is when the uh, uh, calcium ion exposure to the environmental with the uh, carbon dioxide and uh, would form the calcite and uh, heal the crack. And uh, the third one is a recrystallization of the protein dye leached from the bulk pass. So it's worth noting that uh, uh, the first two are what we desire because uh, the components are more stable and robust. So our group at Purdue University working on uh, three different approach, including using uh, supplementary cementitious material uh, to increase the amount of uh, unhydrated cementitious material uh, for the further hydration and uh, using the inter internal curing agent to act as a water resphere to store the water. And uh, last but not least is what I want to introduce is a leveraging the nanomaterial uh, to revise the microstructure enhance the hydration. So uh, what we are looking into is to leverage the nanomaterial, specifically uh, colloidal nano silica or CNS. And uh, we want to evaluate the performance of not only mechanical property, but the self-healing of the uh, concrete uh, that we incorporate into the uh, strength hardening fiber reinforcing tissues material. And uh, we got the TM for the uh, uh, CNS. And uh, here is our mixture design. We use the uh, uh, traditional OPC type one OPC and uh, use a large amount of class C fine ash to improve the sustainability of the material and uh, incorporate with 1% uh, of the polymer fiber called the PVA fiber. And uh, here's a list uh, uh, what we uh, investigate. So uh, we ate the, the uh, colloidal nan nano silica uh, from 0% uh, reference group uh, to 1% and totally four different mix. So uh, speaking of the uh, experimental program, uh, we firstly uh, 
testing the mechanical performance, including the uh, compressive flexure and the tensile for seven days and uh, 28 days. And then uh, we prepare some sample for, for different mixture and uh, to pre, uh, specifically for the tensile sample to preload the sample around 0.8% of the strength to introduce the crack to the uh, sample, then put in the environmental condition. Uh, one is the control 50 degree, 50% uh, uh, RH. The other is a wet dry cycle to simulate the sunny day and the raining day in our real life. And also we use different uh, uh, method to evaluate the self self healing performance for the uh, a sample incorporated with a CNS and without CNS, we use the uh, unique tensile testing and the reason frequency testing and also use the uh, fluorescent uh, digital microscope to characterize and monitor the crack uh, uh, over time. So yeah, so uh, here, I want to share with you some of the results for the uh, mechanical property. So we have the CNS content uh, as uh, x-axis and the different uh, mechanical property, including the compressive strength, uh, flexural strength, and uh, tensile strength. So we can see that for a 0% will be the reference sample. We can see that very clear that addition of the CNS increase of mechanical performance of the sample. So for the compressive strength, it's uh, approximately 13% to 27%. Uh, and for the fracture uh, strength, it's around 7 to 9%. And uh, for the tensile strength, it's 10 to 25% of increase at uh, 28 that depend on different uh, 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 additional rate. So, uh, however, we observe some uh, things like uh, if the uh, additional rate higher than 0 0.6, we see slightly decrease. And uh, we guess, we assume that proper Early due to the excessive nan nanoseeker result in the agglomeration of the nanoparticle, which might have the adverse effect of the microstructure of the sample, but we need to verify that. So yeah, then this slide shows the uh, flexural strength results. Uh, we have the flexural strength uh, with the deflection. So in general, as I just uh, mentioned before, we are uh, adding this uh, uh, CNS to the strength hardening fiber reinforcing tissue material. So uh, overall, the uh, with or without adding the nano it all exhibit the pseudo strain hardening behavior is what we desire. And uh, specifically, we extract the uh, ductility index out of the uh, 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 flexural testing. And uh, we saw that by adding the 0.3% of CNS, and it performed better ductility. It might be because uh, and in 0.3%, it optimizes the toughness of the matrix and uh, perform better bridging effect between the fiber and the matrix. So then we move to the self-healing evaluation of uh, 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 what we want to discuss. So firstly, we start from the resonant frequency testing result. So you can see here with a different wave drive cycle and uh, uh, resonant frequency recovery ratio for the y axis. So uh, it's, uh, so I want to uh, provide a note here is the, for the wave drive cycle, we wait the sample for two days and the dry for two days. So the four day will be the one cycle. So, uh, for the 28 days means uh, 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 seven cycle and uh, uh, 14 cycle, 21 cycle. So uh, it's obviously can be observed that the uh, sample with the nano Zika increase over time, the resonant frequency recovery ratio increase over time. And we also notice that the recovery tend to slow down after 14 cycle, which is 15, 16. 
And uh, also, we uh, one of our concern is uh, CNS uh, have a high re reactivity and uh, might consume some of the uh, cementitious material uh, before getting into the uh, the uh, healing cycle we want to discuss. But apparently, it still maintains sufficient unhydrated cementitious material for further self healing reaction. So uh, then we move to the uh, tensile performers of the uh, this cementitious uh, uh, material, and uh, uh, we have the uh, different wave dry cycle. So for the tensile performers, we are discussing the tensile strength uh, retention ratio and the tensile stiffness retention ratio uh, from the uh, tensile testing we uh, performed. So uh, if we look into this figure, uh, we look into here, uh, 84 day, which is 20 wide cycle. And uh, we can see that uh, the sample incorporated with the CNS, specifically for the 0.6% and 1%, it reached 100% uh, or above for the heating of the tensile strength. And uh, regarding the tensile stiffness, we can observe that 0.6% CNS present the highest tensile stiffness retention ratio. And uh, also we can observe that all of the sample uh, incorporated with a CNS shows higher stiffness retention ratio compared with the reference sample. So yeah, so they might be due to the continuous pro prolenic reaction uh, during the wet dry cycle period, result in finer the uh, the CSH phase and the densify the uh, microstructure of this CNS based cementitious uh, uh, material, and to achieve even higher stiffness than before. So in order to verify what I just mentioned, uh, we conduct the thermal gravity analysis TGA for the sample after the wave dry cycle. So basically we get the uh, chemical bonded water as this uh, black line and uh, compare, combine that with uh, uh, tensile stiffness retention ratio. So we find out something interesting is uh, kind of aligned with uh, what we observe uh, the T the chemical bonding water is kind of aligned with what we observe from the tensile uh, stiffness retention ratio. And uh, so that you can further verify uh, what I just said, the addition of the CNS really benefit uh, the uh, cementation material to improve the uh, hydration degree in the micro scale and positively affect the bulk tensile property of the sample we are discussing. So uh, then I wanna show you the microscope observation. So uh, we use the fluorescent digital microscope to took the picture uh, after the preloading and, uh, and uh, and we also tracking or monitoring the crack heating progress every two to three wave dry cycle. So as you can see here, after two wave dry cycle, this, uh, this sample is 0.3% CNS uh, sample. And after a two wave dry cycle, uh, the crack uh, less than 30 micrometer will be fully sealed or healed. And the crack around for here, crack around uh, 50 micrometer were partially healed. And uh, for the uh, this large crack, uh, 233 micrometer, it's narrowed down to the 130 micrometer, which is what's excited for us. And uh, we also noticed that the uh, fiber can be the nucleation site, perfect nucleation site for growing the uh, healing participant. So again, I uh, want to show you another sample. Uh, it's after one way dry cycle, we observe the hydration participant uh, uh, around the crack. And uh, for the, we took the, uh, we, we used the fluorescent 
to took this photo. Uh, so for the pre-crack sample, uh, you can see a fiber here. After wet dry cycle, you can see some uh, uh, some uh, crystallization uh, around the fiber. So uh, we 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 further want to know the anhydrous cementitious material for each different mix, and uh, 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 we use the SEM uh, to take a bunch of photo for different mix and. Uh, to use the image analysis method to uh, quantify the anhydrate cementitious material. And uh, here I would like to show you the average size of anhydrate uh, cementitious material versus uh, different uh, mixture with different uh, percentile of the CNS. As you can see here, so, so the, the uh, dimension of the anhydrous cementitious material of the reference sample is larger than the uh, sample uh, with the CNS incorporated. So it's decreased, the, time, uh, the size of anhydrous cementitious material decreased with the increase of the CNS. So, uh, so then I move move to the crack analysis. And uh, as I mentioned before that we take, we, we took the uh, photo for the crack at different location and uh, we collect a bunch of the uh, image and then we analysis the crack healing uh, re recovery ratio. So in general, uh, as you can imagine that uh, the, the sample will heal over time. But uh, we also noticed that uh, after 14 cycle, the, uh, the recovery ratio slow down, which might due to run out of some of the uh, anhydrous injection material for the further hydration of polenic reaction. So, and uh, also uh, we find something interesting is uh, if you focus on this red line, uh, the crack seeding of this reference sample uh, before a 14 cycle, uh, it reached pretty high. And uh, then it dropped for the uh, 14 cycle. And uh, after we investigate what happened and we notice that for the uh, reference sample, uh, some of the crack was sealed by the recrystallization of Portland dye, which is a CH, and uh, which is not robust, not strong enough, so that so that the uh, crack recovery ratio decrease. And uh, on the other hand, for the uh, sample with the CNS, uh, uh, the Coidon nano silica will consume the CH and produce the stronger participant for the healing so that it will reflect on the uh, stiffness and uh, reflect on this crack healing. And uh, we also further uh, validate our uh, hypothesis by doing the uh, TGA. So this is the CH. Uh, CH content versus different uh, mix, and one month, two months, and three months, and we got the result. Agree with what I just mentioned. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, uh, the incorporation of like, this uh, CNS can effectively improve the mechanical property of SHCC, and also, and also uh, positively affect the self healing of the uh, sample. So based on our microscope image and analysis, uh, the uh, crack will be healed uh, after a few wet dry cycle and uh, the TGA result indicate that the CNS effectively consume the CH and, and uh, enhance the uh, healing performance. And uh, for the optimal dosage, uh, what we suggest or what we found for our research is 0.3 to 0.6% of the CNS will be perfect for the mechanical and the self-healing performers. So I would like to acknowledge my previous uh, uh, lab colleague and my advisor Luna Lu at Purdue University and uh, funding agency. All right, thank you. I would like to take any question you might have.